Well, thank you all, and good afternoon, and welcome to the White House. We're just delighted that all of you, the Special Olympians from Metropolitan Washington, were able to stop by on your way to Park City and Salt Lake City, Utah. Nancy and I share the pride of your families, friends, and countrymen for your hard work and dedication in getting ready for the third International Winter Special Olympics. Let me take a moment to mention the uncelebrated story behind the Special Olympics. It's the grace and goodness of Eunice and Sergeant Shriver and of all the volunteers and coaches, mothers and fathers and private corporations who stand behind our very special Olympians and who prove time and again that America is the most generous country in the world. Sports have always been an important part of my life. Although my competitive playing days are over, except when it comes to arm wrestling with Congress, <laughs> I can appreciate what these games mean to all of you. There'll be the thrill of competition, the joy of meeting other athletes and love sports as much as you do. And I know that you'll have a glorious time in Utah and that each one of you will represent the American ideal, not necessarily by winning, but by doing the very best that you can. A little over a year ago, another group of Winter Olympians just back from Sarajevo, Scott Hamilton, Debbie Armstrong, Rosalind Summers, the Mari brothers, the rest of America's 1984 team made a very special visit uh, to the White House. There was quite a feeling of excitement that day. All of us relived the way Bill Johnson smoked them on the downhill and the grace and beauty of Kitty and Peter Carruthers in the pairs competition. Then there was the memory of Scott Hamilton's final Olympic moment and the way he battled back from a severe childhood illness to win three world championships and to top it all off with the Olympic gold. And Scott Hamilton's story points to the most important lesson of that day. The mark of greatness in sports is the quality of personal commitment, drive, and determination that all Olympians share. The athletes who competed in Sarajevo may have posted faster times or combined more spins into their routines, but sports has less to do with things like times and double toe loops than with courage of the human heart. When it comes to heart, the athletes from Sarajevo and from everywhere will have to tip their caps to you. By competing in the Utah games, you're proving that a disability doesn't have to stand in the way of a full and active life. And you're showing all of us just how far individuals can go if only they set their minds to it. Thank you all for being such fine representatives of our country. And thank you for being here today. We'll be cheering for you no matter what, win, lose, or draw. In fact, no matter where you place in the competition, you'll soon be a part of that very elite group of Americans who have represented our country in Olympic competition. And that's a distinction that will be yours for the rest of your lives. All of you are truly special. You and the more than 800 other athletes from 14 nations are a testimony to young people all over the world that no one should ever be afraid to dream big dreams or doubt his or her ability to try to make those dreams come true. You've warmed our hearts and we wish you the very best. And God bless you all. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great. Commemorates what you're all doing. Thank you. We'd be very proud to have that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Almost thought for a couple of moments there yesterday there had been some snow out here in the Rose Garden for you to hear. Tell the Anthony. Mr. President, since you raised the subject of the centuries. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please thank her for that. 
Mr. Reagan, Bob Rodwell. Glad to meet you. My pleasure. I'd like to get a percent of pen. Thank you. That's for it. Thank you. Mr. Reagan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Reagan. Oh, yes. Nice to see you. Really terrific. I think it was this time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for that letter. Thank you. I'm sorry I interrupted, sir, but since you raised the subject of our wrestling with Congress, how persuasive do you think Mr. Pantelman will be in uh, helping you with the index message and how to find it? Well, now, normally I don't take questions at a, at a full opportunity, but I have to say with regard to this one, I think that it is very meaningful that Max Campbellton, who is himself a Democrat, but who is also an expert in that field, is heading up our negotiations over there uh, in Geneva would take two days off and make the arduous trip back here just for those two days to tell them what it means to our negotiations to have an approval of this weapon system and how much it will help them in the negotiations. So is it going to help your chances in the House, do you think? I would think if there's the common sense I think is there, yes. How, how do you rate your chances now in the House? <laughs> you know me, I'm always just cautiously optimistic. <laughs> 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 you know, it's tough to get out of Ethiopia, out of Sudan. Oh, no comment. Thank you. 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 Thank you.